Hey, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, if you're watching this on the uh, replay. Uh, my name is Jason Dablow. Uh, we're doing a joint presentation, Trend Micro and AWS today, on how to simplify and automate workload security on AWS. Um, just for some quick introductions here, my name is Jason Dablow. I'm a principal engineer and cloud advisor with Trend Micro. Uh, essentially means I get to travel all over the world, well, travel about a year and a half ago, um, and really talking with our largest customers on how they can make a successful migration to AWS, um, or how to actually go through a digital transformation project as it relates to um, ultimately how they can really transform their business and implement DevOps and things like that as well. Uh, we have kind of this opening day of baseball last week, which generally starts with introduction. So with my introduction out of the way, I'd like to also introduce Jen to you as well. Hi there. Okay. I'm Jen Valverde, AWS Marketplace um, Category Manager for Security. And I'm here, as Jason said, to chat with you about um, Systems Manager and uh, how Trend Micro um, integrates with um, AWS Systems Manager and Distributor specifically. So with that, we'll go ahead and dive right in. Um, let's see here. Let's play ball. Let's do it. So I, as I had said, I'm um, Jen Valverde, and I'm here to talk to you about AWS Systems Manager and really the visibility and control that it gives you of your AWS infrastructure. And we're going to focus more heavily on distributor. Once I get through a couple slides here, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jason at Trend Micro to chat about how Trend Micro, Micro supports and complements Systems Manager and specifically talk in depth about their integration with distributor. I had a hard time getting these slides to change. Give me a second here. There we go. So let's talk about AWS Systems Manager um, from a high level, right? It gives you the visibility and control of your infrastructure on AWS. And it provides a unified user interface so that you can view your operational data from multiple AWS services. And it allows you to automate operational tasks across your AWS resources. So a system manager, you can group the resources. So um, Amazon EC2, EKS, Amazon S3, Amazon RDS, and you can even group by application. It allows you to view the operational data for monitoring and troubleshooting, implement change workflows, audit operational changes for your groups or resources, and a system manager simplifies resources and applications management, shortens the time to detect and resolve operational problems, and it makes it easy to operate and manage your infrastructure securely. So now that we've kind of talked about AWS um, systems management from a high level, I wanna talk about uh, the benefits uh, that it brings to your environment. AWS Systems Manager helps shorten the time to detect problems. And so um, it helps you quickly um, see an overview of your data and groups of resources so you can identify any if issues that might impact applications that those resources use. Your resources can be grouped, right? They can be grouped by applications, application layers, product versus, um, or production versus development environments, um, you can really group them in any way that you choose. It then presents the operational data for your resources in a single dashboard, so you don't have to navigate to other AWS consoles. So let me give you an example there. If you have an application that uses EC2, S3, RDS, you can use Systems Manager to create a resource group for that application. And then you can see the software installed on the EC2 instance. You can change S3 objects um, or database instances. You can see them if they have stopped all from one um, console. It also helps automate the tasks. Oops, sorry about that. It also helps automate your tasks. So it's easy to use the automation portion. Um, it enables you to automate the operational tasks to help make your teams more efficient. Um, with the automated playbooks that we have, you can reduce the errors, um, simplify maintenance, and deploy tasks on AWS resources. You can use predefined automation playbooks, or you can build your own to share for, uh, 
for use in your system. Systems Manager also has built-in safety controls. So for example, you can inc incrementally roll out a new change and automatically halt the rollout if an error occurs. It also helps with um, visibility and control. It helps you easily understand and control the current state of your resource groups. You can view detailed system configurations, operating system patch levels, software installations, application configurations, and other details about your environment through the Systems Manager Explorer and inventory dashboards. Systems Manager is integrated with AWS Config, so you can view changes across your resources as they occur over time. It also helps you manage your hybrid environments. So you can see what's running in AWS, but also on your on-prem data centers um, through this, this singular uh, interface. Systems Manager communicates with an agent that's installed on your servers to execute those management tasks. So it helps you manage the resources for Windows, Linux, operating systems running on EC2 or on-prem in your environment. And then last but not least, um, one of the benefits of Systems Manager is to maintain um, security and compliance. Um, it helps by uh, scanning your instance against your, your patches, configuration, and custom policies. Um, you can define patch baselines um, and maintain antivirus definitions, and you can enforce firewall policies. And you can do this all remotely without having to log into each and every server. So it helps you scale um, and be able to affect change in your environment that way. And it provides a centralized store to manage your configuration data, whether it's plain text, such as database strings or secrets like passwords. And this is useful because it allows you to separate your secrets and configuration data from your code. So now that I've talked a little bit about the overall benefits of Systems Manager, um, we'll go through just a high level features that it offers. And so some of the features um, here are within Operations Management, Explorer and Ops Center, um, Application Management, we have Resource Groups, App Config, Parameter Store, um, Actions and Change uh, for Automation, Maintenance Windows and Change Calendar, and then instance and nodes. Um, we have inventory, the run command, patch manager, um, and distributor that we're talking about today. I'll dive more deeply into that. Um, and then uh, state manager and session manager. And I think uh, we've got a, a polling question I'd like to put up here to see, um, what do you use to deploy agents um, on EC2 today? All right, let's see here. Wait a little bit longer for more results to come through. Well, there we go. So um, I hope to change some of this manual install that we've got going on here and, and help you automate this through um, through Systems Manager. We see a few of them using Systems Manager here and other mechanisms, but um, Manual install is uh, not always scalable, and so uh, let, let's hope to convert you guys um, during this time. Let's see here. All right, so I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into distributor now. Um, at a high level, it allows you to centrally store and distribute your software packages while you main, maintain control over your versioning. Um, and you can use Distributor to create and distribute software pack packages and then install them using the system manager's run command and state manager. Distributor can also use identity and access management policies to control um, who can create or update the packages in your account. And you can use the existing um, identity and access management policies to support systems manager, run command, and state manager to define who can install packages on your hosts. And so after you create a package and distributor, um, it creates a AWS systems manager document, you can install the package. And you can either do that one time by using the run command, or you can do it um, by scheduling it using state manager. 
And there are several benefits to, to doing it this way. You have one package and you can use it on multiple platforms. Um, you can control the access across groups of um, managed in instances. And then you can auto automate the deployment, right? Um, just as Trend Micro has done with their Cloud One workload security. And I want to go ahead and turn it over to Jason at this point to talk about how um, Trend Micro has really um, knocked out of the park here on, uh, on the automation for workload security. Great. Thank you, Jen. So, uh, as a key in baseball as well, we have kind of the halfway point here. Well, kind of towards the, I would say, seventh inning stretch, if you will. Um, like to throw up a poll here in terms of um, some of the ba some baseball, the best plays that you've uh, you think that is the best when achieved in a game. Um, whether or not you've seen it personally, some of these things are uh, quite rare as they uh, exist uh, within different baseball games. Um, my personal favorite is a hit for the cycle, which is a, a, a single batter getting a single, a double, a triple, and a home run in the same game. That's pretty awesome. Um, some things here for like a no hitter where uh, the hitters don't get a single hit against a pitcher, so a, a defensive uh, defensive as well. And then of course the the grand slam, the the play, the home run with everybody on base. Uh, super cool uh, to see that, whether it, on TV or in person as well. So it looks, it looks like we have hit for the cycle is the top one there. Um, there were some others love to hear in the chat as well. And of course, um, if you'd like to use the chat or the Q&A function to talk more uh, or ask questions, um, certainly we'll be taking those questions at the end as well. Uh, so with that, um, I'm also showing a picture here for uh, baseball, um, really to kind of t tell, I would say, a rudimentary um, a story on, on how distributor can actually uh, work in a, kind of a, a fun way. So if you imagine these baseball players were uh, EC2 instances deployed out into the field, let's say, for example, that all of them forgot their glove. Um, certainly that would have been a, uh, something tragic that either the manager or the equipment manager would certainly get fired for. But if you had something like distributor, instead of having all the players come back into the dugout and grab their gloves and then redeploy out into a, a field environment, you could actually take a glove simultaneously to every single player and allow that player to remain deployed in their positions. And now they have access to that glove or that security, if you will, in terms of Trend Micro's workload security. And let's see, got, there we go. So uh, distributor, as you see here, um, contains uh, essentially a way to distribute applications to your EC2 fleet that's deployed. Um, there's a number of uh, packages that are uh, preloaded within an AWS inventory for you to take advantage of. One section of these is in the third party section is Trend Micro's Cloud One Workload Security. It was the first, uh, the first uh, uh, agent or package, application package that was available within this third party section. And essentially it gives you complementary security tooling for your EC2 instances for things like anti-malware, which is probably synonymous in a lot of people's mind with the Trend Micro name. But more importantly, things like protecting your applications against vulnerability with our intrusion prevention or vulnerability protection, and really watching the traffic as it's coming into these EC2 instances with that single agent design that allows us to really drop any of those exploit threats that might be coming in from different places as well. You also have some system tooling like integrity monitoring for files that are, might be changing on an operating system, as well as things like application control to keep that golden image state and, per and prevent kind of application drift or new applications being installed into your server fleet. So all of these security tooling is provided into a single ag agent package that can be deployed uh, directly through a systems manager distributor. And I'll go through those steps now. And there we go. 
So first and foremost, you would uh, set up a parameter store. Um, you might have seen a couple slides ago, Jen detailing out some of the application management. Part of that is a parameter store. If you think of it just like a, um, you know, a list of variables that the distributor packages can call within the environment, uh, it, it's a, that's a really easy analogy to understand what parameter store is doing. It's storing the parameters that can be called by the distributor packages. So in this instance, we defined a few for our workload security tool, which essentially tells it where to activate. So activate to our cloud one service console. And then also where, uh, what tenant or, uh, and token should be used. So each person has a tenant within our cloud one console. And this tenant uh, has a tenant ID as well as a token, which allows your easy to fleet to call in and be managed uh, security wise directly from that particular, um, uh, that your particular tenant. Um, so you can deploy your policies, uh, set up the, the security controls and really manage and give you visibility into your fleet directly from the Cloud One console. Uh, after this, we go back into the distributor and we now we're specifying parameters for the deployment. So we're going to do things like select an action for an install. Uh, we're going to be using this to install a new instance of the agent on your EC2 fleet. And we do this as a in-place update. You, there's other functions here where you can say reinstall or uninstall. So you really take advantage of the packages uh, through this orchestration tooling, which is systems manager distributor. We're gonna do just an in-place update because we don't want to say affect what the applications are doing on these servers by say restarting EC2 instances or things like that. So let's do an in-place update uh, specifically for this new tooling that we're putting on the system. Uh, scrolling down on your distributor, distributor, you now can select the targets that you want to apply this to. Um, so if you wanted to just do a specific number of instances within your fleet for this security agent, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, you can pick it by say uh, different resources or say uh, look at the specific AWS tags to deploy to specific instances. Um, but I think a really good uh, best practice is just to deploy to all your instances to making sure that your security is covered across your entire environment, which I've selected here. Next on the schedule, um, you can actually do this on a schedule. So it'll continuously try to deploy if it sees things without the Trend Micro Cloud One workload security agent. So this way you have basically your entire fleet as a target but also every 30 minutes, the distributor is going to check the inventory of your EC2 instances and making sure that this package is installed across your entire environment. So super uh, helpful in terms of, again, making sure that you have that protection, security, and compliance that you need, particularly when you're dealing with workload security agents and deploying that across your EC2 fleet. Uh, next, you can see that I have spun up a few uh, EC2 instances here. So all three of these uh, are just called AWS Distributor Demo. Uh, it just took just a few seconds to launch. I, I just chose, you know, just uh, Linux instances um, that, that spun up rather quickly. And then what you'll see is after they start running, now the distributor kicks in, sees that there's new, uh, there's new, uh, EC2s that are running without this agent and it automatically deploys to them. You can see this deployed within our Trend Micro workload security console here. Um, so it's right in the middle there, the uh, under my web app production in US East, you can see those three EC2 instances that I created. And you can see that the AWS tag is listed there with its name, AWS distributor demo. Um, that's right in the middle there, if you can see that right there in the middle. You can also see from this screen that uh, my status, I have protected these machines. They are managed now by the uh, Cloud One workload security. And then you also have uh, on the right there, those green bubbles are indicating what security protection is actually enabled for these particular instances as well. So distributor based on uh, essentially the um, selecting all targets within my EC2 fleet and doing and checking that every 30 minutes 
has uh, installed that agent on these three machines. And once these three machines uh, received the agent, the correct policy was put in place by another integration that we have with AWS as well. So you can see on the left-hand side here under the computers view, we're actually bringing in all of your AWS accounts as well as things like the regions that are in use within EC2. We're uh, bringing in things like the subnet uh, as well as all of your VPC information as well. Uh, we essentially use this to identify the inventory from a Cloud One perspective. Uh, so we actually have this, all of the machines within your environment, the EC2 instances within your environment, and can know instantly which ones are not protected by, say, clicking at the top folder that says unprotected machines as well. So this uh, computer's view on the left-hand side uses uh, simply a CloudFormation template. It's part of the uh, back-end technology that helps power uh, AWS Systems Manager. And this uh, CloudFormation template just creates a, a view-only role into your EC2 fleet uh, to give essentially that SaaS visibility for um, all of the EC2 instances deployed within your environment. So again, with workload security and AWS Systems Manager, and particularly the distributor, you have that ability to um, automatically protect your fleet using workload security, which includes uh, protection capabilities like anti-malware, that vulnerability protection that I talked about uh, just a few minutes ago that's host-based intrusion prevention and, and really pre preventing exploits from getting on that system as well. And also things like system controls like our integrity monitoring to watch changes within system files, track the log files for security focused events to give you actionable intelligence within the log files of a system, as well as our application control functionality, which locks down a system to only the specific, um, the specific uh, applications that were deployed as part of that particular server or that specific server use case. I do have one final poll here in terms of just some usability and things uh, around uh, around the systems manager as well. So um, are you using the systems manager in your environment? I know in that previous one, we had a couple people that were using um, uh, systems manager for deployments. Um, but as Jen mentioned, there's a number of other operational techniques within the systems manager that can be used within environments as well. So it looks like um, not a lot are, are using it just today, but hopefully with some of the information that's been presented today, um, you can re recognize how easy it is to really go through um, not just a deployment as we showed with Cloud One workload security, but also things like you know patch management or checking your inventory of your fleet or other types of uh, information that's available within Systems Manager as well. So lastly, as part of the, and let me see, close this because it's blocking my screen. Um, uh, lastly, another part on the back end of Systems Manager that's in use is a service called Control Tower. And Control Tower actually allows um, really CloudFormation templates to be shared across multiple accounts. And this allows easy access to really adding visibility into your AWS workloads, as well as adding security uh, and visibility to the Cloud One console as well. So I showed on the left here on this screen um, how we can actually introduce the AWS accounts and see the EC2 fleet. But we also have that abil ability to do so in terms of one of the other uh, solutions within Cloud One are conformity suite, which is to look specifically at AWS configurations and compare those against the well-architected framework. So Control Tower allows us to really bring that visibility into the configuration of AWS services and really allows that alignment with the AWS best practices that's created across their millions of customers to making sure that they're building better within AWS. And you can see that alignment at the bottom here across some of my demo accounts of really listing out those, um, you know, the, the five pillars of the well-architected framework. 
anything from uh, security, of course, but also things like cost optimization, reliability, or performance efficiency, and really giving you a detailed view of how you're currently configured within the environment, giving you up-to-date stats to making sure that you're building better as aligned with the well-architected framework, as well as giving you remediation and other steps that can be done to um, really help improve how you're utilizing AWS and how you can actually build better within this environment as well. So the two services that I talked about today are part of our overall Cloud One platform. It's security services built for what builders are building uh, within AWS. So we talked or showed some workload security, which is our agents for EC2 uh, protection. It also protects container images as well. You have our container security, which takes that a step further and does it as a pre-runtime status. You have our application security, which is focused on things like AWS Lambda functions and protecting applications uh, from within it itself. Uh, Anything like file storage security, so watching your S3 buckets for any types of threats that might be coming in as well for protecting an application ingesting files directly from S3 or protecting your business or brand as applications are publishing uh, items to uh, S3 that might be consumed by either end users or your internal customers as well. Uh, conformity is our alignment with the well-architected framework and making sure that as you're building uh, within AWS that the it's well aligned with the configuration specified, um, again, by AWS best practice. And finally, our network security, which is really focused in on using uh, AWS first-party networking tools um, like VPC ingress routing or AWS Transit Gateway to implement a next generation IPS. So this is our network IPS or vulnerability shielding that's done um, really from a network level and allows um, you know, superior protection against network-based threats before they reach your different AWS resources as well. We do have a, a free trial there if you're interested. Um, and then of course, and, and lastly, um, we inviting you to really step up to the plate when it comes to um, really taking that next step as it relates to um, really seeing more in depth in terms of Cloud One, how we do our integrations with AWS. We're offering a custom MLB jersey from Fanatics for taking a, a demo uh, after this call as well. For those of you um, that aren't watching live or watching on replay, um, don't worry. This is also, you can take advantage of this as well. We are offering this until the end of this month, end of April. Um, so please, if you're interested in booking a follow-up demo to see more of, uh, again, how Cloud One can help improve the security within your environment, uh, please reach out to the AWS US marketing at trendmicro.com. Uh, and then, of course, if you're interested in connecting on LinkedIn, um, I share a lot of curated articles on forward threat research and other things that comes out of really the Trend Micro Research Department um, and really helping kind of bring that security awareness to my overall community as well. With that being said, um, if there's any Q&A or chat, I would love to hear some of the kind of questions that anyone might have as well. So we have a question for Jen. Since EC2 runs in Amazon, doesn't AWS take care of patching IDS or IPS on the hosts? Um, that's a great question. And it's a very common misconception. Um, AWS has uh, security and compliance as a shared responsibility between our customers and AWS. And so a, a good way to think about it would be um, AWS is responsible for security of the cloud. And that would be the infrastructure, the hardware, the software, the networking that runs um, the cloud itself. Uh, but our customer's responsibility lies within um, the client side. So client side data, customer data, uh, um, identity and access management. And because of this, we, we do partner very closely with um, security partners uh, like Trend Micro in order to uh, develop software that, uh, that can be used on both sides. And um, in this case, uh, Trend Micro um, helps with the uh, um, security of our EC2 instances as well. Awesome. And hopefully that helped clear it up. 
<laughs> That's a great answer. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Jason, are there other benefits to AWS Systems Manager that I can take advantage of as a Trend Micro customer? Yeah, that's a, a really great question. So as part of distributor, you know, I talked about the parameter store, which um, can be introduced there. You can also do things like uh, the, the, patch the patch manager or the inventory to view the inventory and making sure that everything is protected as well. And then, of course, there's some operational things that you can do in terms of um, implementing other solutions, like I talked about with um, cloud formation um, uh, or uh, things like the control tower as well. Um, and finally, the run command, particularly in Systems Manager, is um, super important in that you can actually just run a console command without having access to um, you know, the EC2 instance itself. So you're really setting up that um, distribution of, say, roles within a company. You don't have to give everybody in, in, say, operations SSH access to your EC2 instances. You can just have the role of, say, you know, systems manager run command to be able to really run specific commands against a, a system to really learn more about, um, you know, whatever your job function is, whether it's security and looking further at, say, a incident, or maybe you're in an operations team and just looking at performance metrics within Systems Manager as well. It really allows you, again, to um, not have to divvy out um, SSH access to everyone um, and do things in, say, a manual process. And this also works for um, RDP as well. So, um, you know, the, in the same way for Windows machines, um, you have that ability to quickly query a machine through Systems Manager without having to, say, have administrative access, which the DevOps or application teams, um, you know, don't want you to have as well. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. We have another question around Trend Micro Cloud One uh, and GovCloud. Uh, that's great. Yeah, so the Cloud One does support uh, GovCloud for, um, sorry, some of the protection strategy, but the SaaS itself is hosted in co uh, commercial cloud. We do have, say, our workload security as an on-premise deployment, which can be deployed directly into GovCloud. So you, wish, you yourself can host the management platform within GovCloud, making it fully compliant. We also offer things like FIPS 140. So if you're going through an entire FedRAMP process, you have that ability as well. But we are on the GovCloud marketplace, which you can find all of those offerings that can be deployed within GovCloud specifically. Oh, and now a regional support question, Jason. Any support for AWS China? Uh, yes. So uh, our solutions do work with AWS China in terms of the visibility, which I spoke to for workload security and bringing in that visibility. Um, so yes, that is a supported region within the Cloud One console as well. Great. And uh, there's a question around case studies for energy or utilities organizations. Uh, I know we've done a, a number of case studies. We do have specifically um, a uh, uh, blanking on the term, but uh, essentially public referenceable customers directly on the Trend Micro website. Um, if you look for, say, our customer portal, um, and then you can actually look specifically at different um, different silos or different verticals. So whether it's um, energy or financial or what that looks like, you can see some of the Trend Micro customers that have also deployed um, our solutions on AWS as well. So it's all a searchable database that you can go in and find all of those different reference customers and case studies in terms of different customers, in particular searchable by verticals, uh, as you might be interested in. Great, thanks, Jason. So I did put the link to our customer success stories in the chat as well. And as Jason mentioned, you can search by vertical, which is awesome. Uh, and I, I know there are a couple of cool ones <laughs> around the energy and, and resources sector for sure. Any other, any other questions before we wrap up?
Well, it looks like we've got them all and folks can absolutely connect with Jason, uh, as he mentioned. Thank you so much for attending and don't forget to sign up for your demo so you can take advantage of our Jersey offer. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Talk to you all later.